Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is your brother Mikhail Ahmed Smith here from Qalam. If you enjoy listening to our podcast, please donate to Qalam by visiting supportqalam.com. We love being able to share this content for free, and your donation ensures that we will always be able to do so. Each podcast we produce has thousands of lis- listeners, so the support you give to this community in this effort brings immense reward. You never know who will benefit from your donation. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. That's a good practice that when we hear the blessed name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we send salutations and prayers of peace for him insha'Allah. Because it's through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we have all of this, uh, this knowledge about ourselves and this knowledge about how to get close to um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to begin um, today's class where we left off last week. Um, and in this section for the last five or six classes, um, Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi rahimahullah, has been uh, discussing um, love. He's been discussing love in detail. Um, because the role that love's, love plays in our movements, the role that love plays in motivating us and getting us to do whatever it is that we want to do. Um, so he's been focusing on this concept of love. Uh, uh, he's been focusing on this concept of love for quite some time. Um, and if we remember, just for those who are either new or just as a reminder, the reason, close the door if you don't mind, the reason that uh, the author wrote this book was because someone wrote a letter to him complaining that they were stuck in a particular sin and they could not get out of that sin. They could not stop doing that sin. Um, so after explaining the effects of sin and how sin is harmful to our souls and harmful to our bodies and harmful to every aspect of who we are, the author now has spent so much time talking about this concept of love and what is muhabba, what is true muhabba. So one of the things that we talked about yesterday that I just want to revisit is he talked about the fact that things are either loved for, there's two types of love. The things that you love will fall into two categories. The first category is something that is loved because of its relationship to something else. Right? Something that is loved because of its relationship to something else. Right? So, you know, you like, you like Tom Brady just because you like the Patriots. Right? But the moment Tom Brady is traded, all of a sudden you don't like Tom Brady anymore. You know what I'm saying that's a whack example, right? I, the point being, the point being, though, the point being, nonetheless, is that all of a sudden, you know, when you move to Dallas, now you like the Cowboys all of a sudden, right? Because, well, yeah, I know I don't either, but I'm just saying, um, the the point is still there. I'm giving bad examples, but the point is still relevant, nonetheless, right? But then he said there is there's another type of love, and that type of love is something that is loved intrinsically in and of itself. Like, you don't love that thing because of any relationship to anything else, but rather that is a final, final source of love. And he called that a mahbub li nafsi. Like, that thing is loved for itself. Um, And he talked about that for some time, and he's going to kind of revisit that today. That's why I wanted to kind of refresh our memories on that. And what did he say about something loved intrinsically, because of its intrinsic value? What, is the, what can be loved for that reason? Allah. Only Allah. Only Allah. He's like, only Allah. There's only one reality. There's only one reality that you can love in and of itself, intrinsically, not because of its relationship to anything else, and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And he's going to talk about that some more, inshallah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ amanu, What? أَشَدُّهُ بَنْ لِلَّهِ They are like most severe in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So listen to what he says next. Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi, mashallah, has been dropping gems on us for the last 19 classes, and it doesn't stop today. He says, He says, The more that something is beneficial to you, the more that something is beneficial to you, the more you will be in pain when you don't have that thing. The more you will be in pain when you don't have that thing. Classic. Here. 
And he says, and he says, well, shay. And he says, listen to this. So what's the rule he said? The more beneficial something is for you, the more you will be pained in the absence of that thing. The more beneficial. And then he said, on the opposite side, the more harmful something is to you, the more you will be pained in the presence of that thing, when that thing is there. Right? So now what he says next is, وَلَا شَيْءٍ And there is nothing. عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ means, like, I'm speaking about conclusively all terms. There is nothing anfa alil abd. There is nothing more beneficial for you and me than to continuously turn back to Allah and to ishtighal bi dhikrihi, be busy remembering Allah, to na'am bi hubbihi, taking pleasure from His love and preferring Him over everything else. And He says, Bella hayata lahu. He's like, there's no life. There's no pleasure. There's no ease. Okay. So what is he saying? Again, I'm going to put this because my son is distracting. All right. So what is he saying? He's like, the more something is beneficial for you, the more you will be pained and hurt when it's not there. The more it will hurt you when it's absent. And then he says, and the thing that is most beneficial for us is that turning to Allah, that connection with Allah, that dhikr of Allah, that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, therefore, فَعَدْمُهُ alam شَيْلَهُ So when you don't have that connection with Allah, he says, alam shay. It's the most painful thing that you can experience ever in life. That disconnection with Allah. Now most of us are like, yeah, Shaykh, I wish. There's a lot of things I felt way more painful than not being connected to Allah. You're talking like some like goals type stuff. But listen what he says next. He says, He's like, you know why you don't feel the pain? Because you're so busy and preoccupied with other things. I'm going to say that again. He says, the reason you don't feel the pain of the absence of God the reason you don't feel the pain of the absence of Allah is because what you've done is you've blinded the ruh temporarily from the feeling by its preoccupation with other things. You feel me? You feel me? It's really interesting what he's saying here. And not only did you preoccupy yourself, you nafsak. You, you like submerged yourself in those other things. You completely piled it on over your head to the point where you have no time to even think for a second, am I connected to God? Even though it's deeply troubling you inside. So you have you have hidden from yourself the pain that you're feeling, the pain from missing the most beloved and the most beneficial thing to you which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your relationship. So what does he say? This is like a person who's intoxicated, drunk. Completely, like, what's the word? Lit, maybe? <laughs> Lit is used many ways, so maybe not. I don't turn. There it is. I knew it. I, I was, it was there. It was there. I couldn't quite like. I was like, I've been getting old now, man. So I'm like, I don't know the saying no more. So yeah, like this person mustagrik fi sukrihi, like completely turned up, right? Ihtaraka, and he says this person who's completely intoxicated, aladi ihtaraka daruhu wa amwalahu wa ahlahu wa auladu. This person in their drunken state has destroyed, burnt down their own home, killed their family, and ruined all of their wealth. And because this person is completely intoxicated, he doesn't have any feeling, she doesn't have any feeling for what they've ruined in their life. So when the intoxication fades, they start to wake up. And the, the blindness that was there because of the intoxication is taken away. Then at that point, there's like, yo, I can't believe I lost everything I own. I lost everything I own because of, and I didn't even feel it. That's what he's saying. He's giving an example for it. He says, this is the same state of people 
who live in that distracted state until what happened? Keshef al The moment they pass away and, the, and the, the veil is lifted and they see angels and they see the real deal going down. I'm talking about in the time they're leaving the world. At that moment, at that moment the, the veil is lifted. And he says it's just like that drunk person who now, you know, comes away from his, his inebriation and he's like, what did I do? That, that's what I did. But at the state, they didn't realize that. SubhanAllah. What intiqad minha ila Allah at the time he's going back to Allah and he goes on and forth. So, yo, before we go forward, like, I mean, I, I, this really hit me deep when I was reading this because there's so many times that I've just covered up my disconnection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, you know, writing a book or something that I feel is very important or something very shallow even. Sometimes it's just scrolling through Instagram that I've used to distract me from this anxious feeling of disconnection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes it's not even something really, really profound that we're being distracted with these days. It's off, Nowadays it's even just very shallow things that are distracting us from that pain that we're feeling inside from our disconnection. Karima, please, baby. How old are you today, Karima? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, man. Time flying, man. All right. So the point being is like, people choose all types of things to drown out. Listen, people use everything. They use all types: work, art, music, fun, cars, whatever you name it. Like, there's many things you can use to drown out that feeling of disconnectedness with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. So th that's what I really wanted to like. Let hit home today It's like if you just let go of those things And just focus on you and Allah You will start to realize My heart is calling for him My heart needs Allah My heart is demanding that But I'm, I'm drowning out that Through a concophony of so many other things Look at it this way The heart is calling you Yo we need Allah Yo we need Allah Yo I don't like this This ain't what I need I need something else I need... And remember What we learned last week was there's nothing that you can love intri intrinsically except the love. Because everything else will lead back to something else, right? So your heart is constantly, you know, calling, yo, I need a law, that didn't fulfill me. Yo, I need a law, that didn't do it. Yo, I need a law. But what do you do? Create a concophony of other things around you that drowned out that calling so you don't hear the heart. You don't hear it. I don't hear it. You know what I'm saying? So what he's saying right now, the first thing he started was this. When something is beneficial for you, then when something you open it for me. <laughs> when something when something is beneficial for you, when something is beneficial for you, then you will feel pain in the absence of that thing. Now the first thing I felt is that we don't feel that pain. And he immediately followed that up by saying, because you keep drowning out the the, the sound of that heart in pain with other things. The hint? The hand? MashaAllah, man. And then he says, now he takes it to another level. One more thing, I'll say this before. So, here's the deal. The pain you feel with a disconnect, the pain you feel is part of why the dunya was created. By dunya, I just mean this worldly life, right? The worldly life by its very makeup is not made to fulfill you. It's made because true fulfillment in our, our understanding of what a human being is made for, dunya is just a means to that. So the purpose of that job, the purpose of all of those things, family, wife, children, your mom, like all things that are considered part of this world, those are actually means by which you get to your actual objective. So by nature, they weren't meant to, your heart wasn't made to be satisfied with those things. And that's why you don't feel satisfied after years of hitting up the club. Because you're like, dang, yo, this, I'm not getting what I thought I was going to get from this. It's not satisfying me. Like, I need something. And, and we're like, yo, the imam's still like, yo, I'm getting old here, yo. Like, I've been telling you since you was a little kid, like... <laughs> And you know, I'm, like one thing that was big for me when I first converted, right? So 
I had to give up a lot of evils, right? When I converted. Smoking, all types of things, drinking, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I remember this moment where I was smoking a cigarette, and I think I already converted, right? But it was I was really fresh, like new. And I was smoking a cigarette, and I remember this moment where I looked at it, and I was like, I saw it burning down, and I'm like, it's not filling me up. It's not doing its job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you feel me, right? I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, you're not doing the job. So what do we do? We just add another one. Roll up another one, yo. Right? We just add another one. Another one. Whatever it takes, because we want to we wanna calm that, that, that. There's something in us saying, fill me up. Here's the deal. Your heart was not made to be filled with anything other than a love. Your heart was not, it won't feel sat, satisfied, satiated, whatever you want to call. It won't be calm. You won't feel peace. And it will t torment you till you get old. But if you're woke at a young age, then you're like, yo, doing that, man? You ain't gonna fill me up. You get you you wake up at a young age, you're kind of like, nah, no, man. I'm gonna use it. I'm not gonna make it my, my goal. So the point I'm trying to say here is that when you understand that it's just a means, then you realize that my heart can only be fulfilled by the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Let's keep going, inshallah ta'ala. Now, now he switches gears. What does he say? He says, imagine you, you are, uh, 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 you are uh, uh, inebriated, right? Deeply inebriated. And, and in that inebriated state, you destroyed the thing that was, caught, that, that was most uh, uh, needed to you. You destroyed that thing in that inebriated state. But while you were inebriated, you didn't notice how bad it was. Then you wake up. That's what he was talking about. So he says... He says, He says, here's the deal. Whatever you lose in the dunya, whatever you lose in the dunya, you can expect that something can replace it. Whatever you lose in this world, Allah can give you better or more of it. And as we say, Allah never takes. He only gives. Even His taking is giving. Sometimes he takes something away, like, why did I lose that? And bam, something else comes right there. But he never takes, he only gives. So he says, whenever you lose something in the dunya, it can always be uh, a replacement be given. Whatever you lost in the dunya was going away anyway. It wasn't eternal. But here's the deal. He's like, He's like, but what about when you lose something there's no replacement for. I'm going to say that again. What about if you lose something there's no replacement for? And there's no substitute. He's like, when you realize you've lost something in this state of intoxication with everything possible, when you realize and you wake up at the moment of leaving the world and you realize that I've lost something that I can never replace, he says, you'll wish Allah just took your life. You'll wish you were just dead at that moment. He's like, the, the situation here is that you'll realize that this was something there was no replacement for. And he says a poem which is beautiful. Uh, the poem says, it's a, it's a clean poem, alhamdulillah, right? We've been skipping mad poems, right? مِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِذَا ذَيَّعْتَهُ عِوَذٍ وَمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ ذَيَّعْتَهُ عِوَذٍ وَمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ ذَيَّعْتَهُ عِوَذٍ He says, كل شيء, everything in this world, إِذَا ذَيَّعْتَهُ If you lose it, waste it, gone, عِوَذٍ There's a substitute for it. وَمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ But the things from Allah, إِنْ ذَيَّعْتَهُ عِوَذٍ مَا عِوَذَ اللَّهُ no replacement for those things. It doesn't come back. Now, he ends this section with a beautiful narration, which really summarizes where our focus needs to be. He says, Wafil Afir Ilahi. There is a Hadith Qudsi. Y'all know what Hadith Qudsi is? Yeah. What's Hadith Qudsi? <coughs> it's uh, something that Allah said. Uh, it's uh, narrated by uh, Shibir. Yeah. So, so basically, Sometimes like the Prophet ﷺ would say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. But it's not Quran, right? It's in the words of the Prophet ﷺ, it's called Hadith Qudsi. 
right? There's many hadith like that. So this is a similar one, and it's beautiful. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ibn Adam, O son of Adam. Now, whenever my teacher used to say, whenever you hear Ibn Adam, you know what you should do? Put your name there. Put your name there. Mika'il. You know, whatever your name is, right? Many names in here, right? Put your name there. Just take your name and put it in. Ibn Adam, O Mika'il. I created you for my worship. Stop playing. And I took the responsibility of your sustenance. So stop getting tired. I took the responsibility of providing for you. So stop getting so tired. Seek me, you'll find me. Look for me, you will find me. And guess what? If you find me, you found everything. You found everything, yo. I'm telling you, the car ain't gonna do it. It won't fill you up. I'm telling you, you're gonna get the car, you're gonna drive it around, and you, the, 10 days later, you're like, this ain't whack, yo. I can only touch these seats so much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like everything in the dunya will leave you feeling like, what the heck? That was whack. <laughs> I'm telling you, and sometimes it's the big things that everyone hyped up. Those big things, I'm like, oh, it's amazing. You did? You're like, that was weak. You're like, is life about that? Come on, man. Y'all love. This is whack. It's supposed to be whack. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Dunya is supposed to not truly fill you up because Allah's like, yo, I'm just trying to show you what I really want to give you. You know, you know what Imam Ghazali says? <coughs> you know what Imam Ghazali says about relations, like uh, 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 intimate relationships? He's like, Allah gave that feeling so you can understand the lowest feeling of Jannah. <laughs> epic, yo, epic. I'm so happy you weren't shy to say that, yo. The feeling of intimate intimacy, the pleasure. Imam Ghazali explains the reason Allah gave us that is so you know the lowest pleasure of Jannah. The lowest. You know what I'm saying? Like, Allahu <coughs> Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So he says, let's finish this hadith. I'm going to read it again. Ibn Adam, Mikayo. Allah is talking to me. Khalaqtuka li ibadati. I created you to worship me. Fala tala. Stop playing around. SubhanAllah, right? What's a kalaf to be rizqiqa. And I took the responsibility of your sustenance. So stop working so hard. It's my water. Thank you. Seek me, you will find me. The in wajetani, that this is the crux. This is it. In wajetani, if you find Allah, if you find me, O Mikail, if you find me, O Ahmed, if you find me, wajetta kulla shay, you found everything. You got everything. Wa in fituka, fataka kulla shay. But if you miss me, if you live this life and you don't get a connection with Allah, you lost everything. Everything. And I'm the more beloved. Wa'ana. And O Mikael, he, Allah is telling me, He's telling you, Ana Ahabu Ilaika. I'm the most beloved thing to you. Min kulli shay. There's nothing that loves you or that you should love more than me. Nothing. Ya Allah. That's heavy. Alright, let's go forward, inshaAllah. Okay, so the next chapter. Any, 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 like little questions? Like that needs to sit for a moment. I got that last line. That last that line. Last line? Yeah. Ana ilayk, that I am more beloved to you than everything. I am more beloved to you than everything. everything. That was it. Oh, before that was oh, if you lose me, meaning you you miss this opportunity to meet Allah, to get Allah, then you've lost everything in the dunya. Because you lost the point of the world. You got stuck in a car. And the car was supposed to just get you around. 
You were created for the... Look, this is the way one of my teachers said it was beautiful. He is like, the Khalik created the makhluk to serve you so that you could know him. The Khalik creator created you, created the creation so that you could use it to know him. But then you started to take the creation as the God. So he's like, yo, like, hello? That wasn't the point. That wasn't the point of this whole thing. Feel me? Any questions? Yeah, Nashad. You said, so he took the responsibility for the provision, so stop getting tired. And seek what? Seek me for what? Seek me, you will find me. So that part about working is important because we let work consume us and stop us from turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not saying, like, stop working completely. But I mean, don't become a workaholic. Who People who don't know what to do when they don't have work to do. You, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? That y'all know people like that too. Like, you don't know what to do when you don't have work. Like, <laughs> call the boss. Anything else for me to do? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm free. I'm free. I mean, like, yeah. The boss like, sure. Sure, yeah, sure. No problem. I'm not paying you more. No problem. <laughs> I just need work. You need work to do. Like, work? Yeah, you don't got some rakats to bust out? You don't got some tasbih to do? Like, you don't got a purpose to life? And that purpose to life is connection with God. Connection with Allah. That's the purpose of life. You know, that's the purpose. So, subhanAllah, man, I'm... Is it this is this really this section I know I want to move forward but I just I wanted to marinate you know what I mean like, like my, my, you know, my wife like sometimes there's this thing on in earth you say it's undone so like when you're cooking and it's already done but it's kind of like like you, if you lift the pot off then it messes up everything y'all you, you know in English what you even call this right but like you gotta keep the lid on it's done you, I'm like yo it's done let's go she's like no yo, let it sit y'all know what I'm talking about yeah okay guys I'm used to just like it's done alright open it up but oh yeah steaks too though when you do steaks you gotta let them sit for that two more three more minutes right okay so like right now this message is deep like so I'm like I just wanted to sit for a minute you feel me was you have to prioritize love though okay I'm gonna give you something for that and maybe you were here I'm sure sure you were here for this hadith Aisha says that when the Prophet Sallallahu was at home he would be playing with us joking with us having a good time the moment the Adhan went out what would happen it was as if he didn't know who we were right because that's prioritizing love right there right Prior prioritizing love so when it comes to people yeah, like my, our whole life should be around those that love us the most. And those who are closest to us. We should be focused on them. Yes. Yes, definitely. And you can know Allah through loving them. But, if that love like comes in the way of you and God, now you gotta be like, yo, moms. <laughs> nah, for real. You gotta be like, yo, mom, nah. Allah told me I gotta do this. I'm sorry. I love you, mom. But I can't. It's, it's Allah. Right, so there, right there. So yes, it can distract you though. I think some of us let our love for other people distract us from our love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we seek fulfillment too, through relationships. But those relationships will never fulfill you the way your relationship with Allah will. The Prophet Sallallahu is laying in bed next to Aisha, warm, cuddled up. And he goes, Da'i unaji rabbi. Oh Aisha, can I please go talk to my Allah? Like, you wanna talk to who? <laughs> because there's a higher love There's a higher love 
And she's like, yeah, go. Like, I'm not coming between you and Allah. I'm not coming between you and Allah. Another hadith, the two people Allah loves is the husband or wife that wakes up for tahajjud. And what does she or he do? Y'all know this one? Yeah. What? They pray together, right? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The hadith says he wakes her up for tahajjud, or she wakes him up. And then he rolls over, like, no, I'm not doing it. So she takes a little water and she sprinkles it in his face. Ooh. Ooh. What? Sprinkle the water? Man, I would be done. <laughs> Man. He's <laughs> joking. Most of us would be done. I'm sorry, I didn't. No, I'm saying, for reality speaking, most of us, if you start sprinkling water in your spouse's face, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, yo, what you doing, man? You heard one talk, and now you all pious. <laughs> so it's not just us, son, it's everybody. It's <laughs> okay, okay, cool. cool. Alright, let's keep rolling, let's keep rolling. So to answer the question, like I'm just saying, don't let don't let loves overcome your love with a love. That that husband or, or wife will not fill your heart's void. I don't care how beautiful or whatever they are, they will not fill that void. And you two should not expect each other to fill that void. You should not expect each other. You should know, like yo, I can't. You need to talk to God with that. You get what I mean? Okay. My man said we're gonna try that. <laughs> like, like I, there's something I can't do for you, and there's stuff you can't do for me. I gotta go to God for that, and you too. Like we help each other too, Allah. Okay, cool. All right, let's keep rolling. So, the next thing he says, um, I don't have a timer with me today, so. Um, <laughs> No, no, but how long have we been going? 31. 31? Excellent, thank you. Okay, so the next section, I'm not going to read the whole next section, but basically what he says in this next section, because I want to get to the section after it, what he says in this, this section is, He says the whole basis of the deen, the whole basis of the Quran is based on this, the ability to cultivate this type of love. For Allah and this love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the entire deen is around cultivating this type of love. And so there's a hadith which is very beautiful. Um, he says, the hadith is where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, nafsi biyadi. I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, you will never, none of you will ever have faith until I become more beloved to you. Who? The Messenger of Allah become more beloved to you, beloved, than your children, your father, and all of humanity. And then he says in another hadith that one day, Umar bin Khattab said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Wallahi, la anta ahabu ilayya min kulli shay, illa min nafsi. Umar bin Khattab, I love him, he was so real. He was so real. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, I love you more than everything. Except myself. I love more than everything except myself. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La Ya Umar. Uh-uh. La Ya Umar. Hatta akuna hafa ilayka min nafsik. La. What does La here means? You ain't there yet. You haven't reached yet. He says, La Ya Umar. Nope, not yet. Until I'm more beloved even to your own self. What does that mean though, by the way? What does that mean? Like, what does that practically mean to y'all that you love the Prophet more than yourself? Yeah, your desires. Like, I'm not going to listen to my desires in Ramadan. Desires like, yo, just eat that real quick. <laughs> like, yo, yo, what's wrong with you? Like, nah, I don't love you like that. You know, that literally. Enough is like, yo, do that. I don't love you like that. Right there, that love kicking in. That love is, you feel what I'm saying though, right? Like, the, I love you more than myself means my love for you will trump me listening to my nafs. All right, cool. So he says, La ya Omar. He's like, nah, Omar, you haven't, radiallahu anhu, you haven't reached yet. So this is beautiful. And the way my teacher, 
explained it. He says, Umar radiallahu an, he paused for a moment and he put his head down. He goes, and now I love you more than myself too. And he goes, now you reached. Now you're there. But like, I'm thinking to myself, what did you just do? <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't just quickly go, all right, yeah, I love you more than myself. He's like, no, no, you, ain't, you don't know what you're talking about. He's like, all right, let me think about this. Let me process this. So he changed something inside. It's like, okay, no, I love you now more than myself. I love you now. Now, in class today, we kind of talked about today's class in Qalam, kind of, today. So, in class today, one of the students, I don't see him here, right? So, uh, he was like, he was like, yo, this love seems real conceptual and stuff. Like, what's the way, how do I really love Allah and the Rasul more? And I was like, no, you have to create love. Wait, 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 you're still abstract, what do you mean? You have to make yourself know the beauty of something and why you should love it. And then keep reminding yourself, all right, I, I, mashallah, like, I don't drink soda no more. Right? That's because my better half has schooled me on the sugar and everything in it. My better half has kept reminding me, you know how much sugar right now? Mm -hmm. You see, you see, you see that, right? <laughs> so now, in my head, a glass of, of, of Sprite don't look good anymore. You know what I see? I see like some more, like you know. <laughs> you, know you don't get me. I'm saying. <laughs> like now that it equates to that for me. So she created, mashallah, and I said to her the other day, I was like, yo, you know what I really love that you've done for me. You made me love water again. All my children love water. Like, you know how most kids are like, give me some juice, give me some juice. My kids like, can I have some water? If you give them soda, they're like, mom, yo, soda. Like, it's haram. They, they drinking soda over there. She's like, yes. We don't got dental insurance. <laughs> We ain't got money to pay for those seats, yo. Uh-uh. Tell them don't pay like that. <laughs> so, watch what's inside. It's all good. I'm just messing around, man. Seriously, though, creating love, all jokes aside, how did I not like soda anymore? It's because I now see and equate those negative aspects of it to that can of soda. So, yeah, it used to taste good, but now you've trained yourself and you keep hearing it. That's the key. So, so I said to them, for example, Salatul Fajr is hard, bruh. For brothers, Salatul Fajr in the masjid. I'm not Salatul Fajr. That's like lazim, guys. Come on, man. Right? For real. All right. Salatul Fajr in the masjid. Right? If you close. I'm talking about five minutes. Close. Maybe ten. If you close, that's hard. So what, what, what you have to do is constantly read the benefits of that. You have to constantly remind yourself of the benefits of that action because you yourself... Like, if, if she stops reminding me about soda, you start to forget. You get it? So then she's like, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But it's a constant, constant struggle to learn, to, to, to train yourself to love what you're supposed to love. You understand? Everyone with me? Okay, so that's my example with the water. So as a, as a, as a like, a thing to my better, like, I love water now. And I used to be like, juice, like, I love juice. But then like, okay, the sugar, this, that, whatever. And now, alhamdulillah, water tastes good again. Water tastes sweet again. Right? And now that's because I've created a better love. Why am I saying all of that? To show you this is practical. Love of Allah and love of the Prophet is practical. You can train yourself how to love Allah. What I felt that Umar bin Khattab did in that hadith, when he put his head down, he went through all the benefits of loving the Prophet Everything the Prophet was giving him. Like, like, imagine someone's like, 
uh, same same example, but they're like, yo, water or Sprite. And I'm like, and so what am I doing? I'm thinking about everything she taught me about Sprite. And I'm like, water, please. <laughs> that's what happened there. He's like, I love you more than, I love, I love myself more than you. Like, no, nah, that's not good. So he's like, hold on. All right, water, please. I love you more than myself. So what I'm trying to tell you is we hear a lecture one time, we read a hadith one time and expect us to change. You got to keep filling your environment with reminders. Like a personal trainer. You got to keep keep at it until you become an advocate for water yourself. You, it reaches a point where I'm using the water now. It's just a, like, okay, cool. <laughs> till you become an advocate for water yourself. It's that ingrained in you. All right? So that's my point um, about creating practical love for things. Okay. So basically this section, I want to go to the next section. What time is it? Though? How, how long has class? 40, 40. 40? We good, yo. We good. We good. Okay, bismillah. The next section is beautiful. I don't think we'll be able to finish it, but at least we can begin it, inshallah ta'ala. Is it not happening? Yeah. Okay, can you hit the... Let me... Let's just let me <laughs> And there's one right around the corner. Uh, 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 right around the corner. Are we done? Should we stop? Okay. All right. This I need your attention for this one because this is uh, Ibn Qayyim al Josi. Uh, he speaks about at this section behavior modification. Um, he speaks in this section deeply about what behavior modification, and what he says is um, the basis for all movement. The basis for all movement. What, what, what is the basis behind all movements? Now the reason he's talking about movements is because the original question at the beginning of the book was about actions. I'm stuck doing this particular action. So now what he's talking about is motivators to movement. What causes movement in general? So listen to what he says. He says, all movement, whether it be in the heavens, the higher realm, or the lower realm, the basis of it is love. All movement, the basis of it is love. And then he says, there are three types of movement. Number one is harakatul ikhtiyariya iradiya. Willful chosen movement. Right? Willful chosen movement. Like, right? Chose to do that. Willful. I had volition there. I thought about it. Then he says, tabi'iya. He says, natural movements. Natural movements, here he's talking about the movement of things physically through the world and the movement of the planets and the movement of all types of things, physical movements in the, in the world, outside of us. And then he says the last one is harakatul qasriya, forced movement, forced movement. So the first thing he says, so three types of movement, willful movement, uh, will, uh, the, the movement of the celestial bodies, you could say, the movement of the earth, the movement of the, the water on the earth, the air, all of these things, he's talking about the second category. And the third category is what? Forced movement. Forced movement. Now, what he says next is, he says, when we talk about physical movement, what we have to understand, this is not my words. He says, naturally all objects are at rest until they are acted upon by an external object. At all, at all things are what? Are at rest. Who's saying this? Ibn Qayyim al Thank you, right? Who's Jack and what? But who came after? Allahu Alam, right? For real. He's literally, he's like, all things are at rest until they are acted on by an external force. So he says, an action and things will stay at rest and always go back to a state of rest until uh, when, un unless something is, uh, a force is constantly applied. 
I mean, y'all know that already. Yeah. But I'm just telling you, he's saying it, which is pretty profound, right? Um, so then he goes, now if you understand that, then he says, when we look at physical movements, what you have to understand is that from our perspective and what we're taught through the Quran and Sunnah is that all the movement of the heavens and the earth Everything that is happening is happening by the angels. Malaika. So look what he says. It's beautiful. He says, He says, everything in the heavens and the earth and in between. He says, all the movement of the planets, the sun, the, the moon, the stars, the wind, the clouds, rain, growth and vegetation, the, the movement of the wings of a bird, uh, it's all by means of angels. All by means of angels. So he says, There are so many verses that talk about this and many things. He says, He says that Allah has even placed a malaika at the womb. The rain, there's a malaika for that. For vegetation, a malaika for, uh, 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 malaika for that. For riyah, the wind, there are malaika angels for that. For this, everything, every, everything. And then he says, And every human being has four angels. Two on each side, and two protectors front and back. Kiram katibin, and then the angels that are, the guardian angels in the front and the back. Like this room is like full. So he's like, all of these angels. Now what is he saying here? He's like, all of these angels are moving these things. The rain, the winds, the planets, everything. Why? He says the reason they're moving them, he says, This is worship for them. This is worship for them. So you see, you go and go to the beach and you see the waves crashing against the shore. And you think of how beautiful that is. And then you realize that angels out of their love for Allah are creating that movement. <laughs> angels out of their love for Allah are creating the crashing of the waves on the shore. The leaves blowing on an autumn day. The wind blowing is the angels worshiping Allah and their worship is out of love. Their worship is out of love. So all of those movements are because of some force behind them. But what's the force? It's love that the angels have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so, so like if you think about this, you'll be woke on a whole new level. Like a sunrise, seeing the sun rise before your eyes. You're like, this is happening out of love. That movement happened too out of love. <laughs> All movement is happening out of love. So then what he says next, okay, then what he says next, once you've understood that, he says now, we, we said there's three types of movement. Natural movement, forced movement. So he says all of the natural movement is actually because of what? <coughs> Force of the angels. Force of the angels. You with me? Now there's one more type of movement. The next type of movement is the movement of choice and free will. Like, and he says that type of movement is also based out of love. Now here's the beauty. The angels do all they're supposed to do. They don't disobey. So they have love, but they have to do what they do. They're, pro, they're created in a way that they don't disobey. But the beauty of Bani Adam is that the, 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 the effects of our movement that we do out of love for Allah, we had a choice. But there's beauty in that as well. But here's the key. What is the motivation behind the angels' movement? Love. And what is the motivation behind our movements? Love. I'm gonna stop here. This whole section, we really gotta go into it in more detail. The main point that we have to, he says, look at this statement, I'll end with this. He says, He's like, if there was no hub, the planets would not rotate. Nah, 
This ain't even poetry. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's just like that poetry. I mean, you could put it into poetry, yes. But do you get what? Do you understand what he's saying? So, so how does this practically connect to me? Like, I, I, it's all love. So, what's up? There's a hadith. There's a hadith that I found in Tirmidhi, and the hadith is about three people who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala smiles at. So one of them is a person, innocent Timothy, who has been on a long journey with his people. They've been traveling all night. You have been on one of those journeys where y'all travel and travel. You finally get to the hotel and you're like, beat, right? So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi says, this person is traveling, traveling, traveling with his people. They, they, they stop, they set up shop, they book the hotel, they get set. And everyone, ahabu shay ilayhim, no. The most beloved thing, just everybody wants to crash. The ahabu shay ilayhim unknown. So everybody lays down, and one of them stands up in the corner. Allahu Akbar. Right? Like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith says, Allah yabhaq. Allah looks at this person and smiles at this person because he's overpowering. A natural love inside by a greater love. By a greater love. By a, you, you feel me? Everyone wants to knock out. He wants to knock out too. Allah Akbar. Tahajit, I know we joked about Tahajit, right? But for real, when that love is cultivated, when you can get up for Tahajit and don't tell nobody, yo, you on the doorsteps of love, yo. When you can get up with tahajit and don't tell nobody. Just get up, make wudu, lose your sleep. You know, when you make wudu, now nah, I can't even go back to sleep, bro. I don't have the time. Right? Get up, make wudu, two rakats, you give up sleep for those two rakats. You're on the, 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 the threshold of becoming the beloved of Allah. Because you're overcoming your lower love for sleep or a higher love, connection with Allah. Feel me? Allah give us to a feet. I'll give us till fifth. So you don't want to know what's happening. The question is: Is there an English translation? I have not come across a good one. So you know what I'm doing? I'm turning this class into a book, inshallah. Make dua for me. Make dua for inshallah. The book is will come out soon, don't <laughs> There's no English of it. There's no English of it. There is a really bad old PDF. That I found that was done a while back. I'll message them inshallah. Uh, uh, give me the phone after class. I can text this. Is it possible? You mentioned people getting distracted. Uh, to be distracted by actually like seeking knowledge. Mm. Wow, that's a great question. Did people get distracted from Allah by knowledge? La <laughs> yanfa. Is that? That would apply right there. I'm just looking at my, my better half because she's not. <laughs> yeah, I agree with, in a way, I think sometimes if your knowledge is, if, 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 you should never, your knowledge should never trump your ibadah. Like you should seek knowledge in a way that you're still able to, to, to do your ibadah. See, here's the thing. All right, hold on. This needs explanation. Why do we love knowledge? Because knowledge has a quality of a ulu. It elevates. It raises your soul up. It elevates you. So we love knowledge because it, it arrogates us. It lifts us higher. Okay? Ibada, by nature, humbles you. So the nafs naturally likes. The nafs. This is very important question. The nafs naturally likes knowledge over ibadah. You will find yourself able to pick up a book on Islam and just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then I'm like, yo, let's pray to the kai. Like, I'm tired, yo. Let me do some zikr, yo. I'm tired. Yo, let's read some more about this deep aqidah issue. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, because the nafs loves knowledge because knowledge makes me raise up. Ibadah lowers me down. It's literally humble. It's literally putting you down. That's why people don't like it as much. Not people, the nafs. 
they'll always prefer knowledge over a uh, thing. So to answer your question, that's a great question. Um, so, so the way I look at it is this. You need to have your regimen, daily regimen, right, of ibadah. Like the dhikr you do, the Quran you do, the rakah you do, your daily regimen. And after that, you seek knowledge, yo, from Mahadi to Zahad, cradle to the grave. But you gotta have your daily dose of ibadah, though. You know what I'm saying? And you can't start picking up books and studying and this and that without doing your ibadah. Because that ibadah brings you back down, man. It grounds you. Any other questions? I thoroughly enjoy uh, this class with y'all. Someone was like, yo, we worried the book's about to end. What are we gonna do with the book's over? We're gonna do something else. <laughs> <laughs> like, like will we just go home, no more halakha? No. We do another book, we do something else. Right? We study we have to we need these for our iman to be strong. We can't just stop getting together learning. No, we keep doing this because this gets me through the week. This strengthens me, right? So we need this, right? Okay. I don't know. That I don't know. What's the next book? That I don't know. I am definitely open to suggestions, inshallah, after class. Oh, the emotional intelligence? Inshallah. That's not as motivating, though, as like this. This is like, this is, this is deep, man. Like, as I'm teaching this and talking to you guys, it touches me so deeply. <laughs> so I hope you guys benefit as well. Yes? Will you be here next week? Is next week the 27th? No. 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 On the 27th, we'll have a guest here because I'm going to Valley Ranch. Okay. On the 27th, that's not next week. Next week we're here. All right? Huh? Who the guest is? Nah, if I say that, then it's like... Come on. <laughs> I'm still working on a few people. I have someone set, but I got you. All right. So we're done, inshallah. Any other questions? Yes, that's it. I know one of them. They're in the battlefield. All their allies run away and they just keep going forward for the sake of a bomb. I can't remember the first one. Can, can I give an example of what? I'm sorry, there's one more question. I'm sorry. Getting up for pudger. Any Anything you choose to do. The basis of that is what we're going to talk about next week, which is love. I mean, we've been talking about love, but he's trying to kind of show you how. I was like, yo, can we get done with love? Like, no, it's very important. I'm serious. It really controls all of our actions. Like, if it's time for Isha, and you're playing a video game, and you remember this darsh, you're going to remember, do I love this game more than I love? And you'll, you'll put the game down because you'll feel stupid. <laughs> no, I'm serious. If really, really, you'll feel really stupid. You'll be like, I don't love this game more than God. I'm putting this game down. And I feel you'll feel complete, you'll feel good when you act according to your true love. When you act according to what your true love, you feel in line with yourself. But what stresses us out is when I'm acting this way, but I really know I'm supposed to be this way. All right, that's it. We're, 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 we'll stop, inshallah. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdi. Let's make a short dua, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Ya Allah, we ask you to make this gathering beneficial for our hearts and souls, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to, to protect us from these distractions that, that blind us from our soul calling out for you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us close to you, Ya Allah, and give us that love of you, Ya Allah. We ask you for your love, Ya Allah, more than anything else, Ya Allah, so that we can avoid those things which you dislike, Ya Allah, and we can do those actions which you love, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to guide our family members as well, Ya Allah. We ask you to put hidayah in their hearts, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and make us a means of their hidayah, their guidance as well, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to accept this gathering, Ya Allah. And give us the ability to gather more like this, Ya Allah. Wa akhru da'wana anilhamdulillah rabbil alameen.